What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Broadway Joe. Well, if you'd like to stay up to date with boxing news, please hit that subscribe button. And if you've been here before, thanks for coming back. So today we're going to talk about the undercard on the Terrence crawford Sean Porter fight. But before I do that, if you guys enjoyed the video at the end, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you share it on your Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you know, Reddit. Only because, you know, I want to create awareness for have, us having better on the cards. And I make these videos. I do a lot of research that goes into it. So I would greatly appreciate it if you guys shared it on your social media or on Reddit or any other place where you think it could get uh, more views. All right. But let's get into the video. So the co-main event is Esquivia Falcao from Brazil, silver medalist versus Patrice Volney. Now, these are two relatively unknown fighters, but this is for an IBF middleweight eliminator. And we all know that IBF don't play with their mandatories. If you are mandatory, you're going to get your shot. And the IBF champion in the uh, in the middleweight division is Gennady Golovkin. Gennady Golovkin currently has a fight schedule against Murata uh, late this December. But we're going to see. Whoever wins this fight is going to face the winner of that fight. Unless the person vacates the belt, you know, which... Could happen, but let's see. I doubt it. Um, the, Volney, he's... I couldn't find his height, but just off watching him on tape, he's like a good 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, Every fight I saw of him, he just looked so much taller than his opponent. I don't know if his opponents were sh so much shorter than him or if he was so much taller, but he looks like a really, really big guy. Uh, one thing I noticed, he doesn't have a good inside game. where he, When the guy would pressure him inside, his defense pretty much was just to cover up. He didn't really step aside. He didn't really throw uppercuts or overhand, uh, 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 throw hooks or overhand rights or nothing. He kind of just waited there until the referee kind of broke him up. So he's definitely susceptible to losing the fight if the fight goes on the inside. But he does make for a good fight because he does come forward. He does have his hands low at times. But he's quick with the reflexes, brings him up, you know, when, when he's getting attacked. But keeping your hands down just in general isn't a good idea. Especially against Falcao. Falcao is a silver medalist, as I just mentioned. He's a uh, he trains with Robert Garcia, one of the best trainers in all of boxing, and he's he's very disciplined. The only thing I would say is he is very straight up. Uh, I feel like he needs a little bit more head movement, especially since he also comes forward. So this makes for a good fun fight. It's between it's a fight between two fighters that not are not necessarily very known, but hey, again, like I mentioned, they're gonna get a title shot very soon and again they both have a style where it makes for a good fight so i actually like this fight on the, on the card uh the second fight on the on the card is johnny beck alim kunali versus hassan Endam. now this is a terrible fight uh there's no way ifs and to but about it. it's a terrible fight Endam is washed up Endam should not be on the undercard of a major pay-per-view absolutely not this fight is unacceptable uh Alim Kunali, he's coming off a knockout win of uh, Rob Brandt, a former world champion. And Alim Kunali is a very patient, sharp puncher. That, like the way I, I saw, it, I see him fighting is he never veers off his game plan. He goes in with a game plan and he goes in to execute. And Endam, an older fighter, he, I think he's 38, 39 years old, a guy who's been through the ringer, fought Quinlan in 2012 and got dropped six times. Got stopped a couple times, won by Murata. He is just like, he's already a beaten man. He's already an older guy. There's no way he's going to beat this guy. I think Top Rank put this on the card because they know uh, uh, Alin Kulani is a very uh, sharp puncher. And Endam is an older puncher, a guy who's been knocked out. So I think they want to create a uh, like a knockout of the year type thing or a crazy knockout. Not, not saying that I'm predicting that, but something... Where it's like, whoa, did you guys see that knockout? Because Alun Konali's from Kazakhstan, and we all know, unless you're a super knockout artist, you know, those people, they usually don't have a huge fan base. So I think this is a way of trying to get him a savage knockout on a major undercard. That way, get his popularity up. So uh, another fight on the undercard is Raymond Murataya versus Steven Ortiz. This is a fight between two undefeated fighters. And I'm really, really high on Raymond Murataya, man. Raymond Murataya, if you guys are not familiar with him, definitely get familiar. He's also trained by Robert Garcia. As you guys know, he trains, you know, Mikey Garcia. He has trained Brandon Rios. Uh, you know, I could go on and on all the fighters he's trained. You know, Jose Ramirez. But 
He is very sharp, very hard puncher. And Steven Ortiz is, he only has three knockouts. I want to say he's 12 and 0 with three knockouts. And he tends to raise his chin when he's coming for. He tends to jab and and <laughs> this guy Muratai is so sharp. That 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 shit ain't going to work, man. Like I'm I also predict that this might be a really bad knockout because again, he's coming in a bit with his chin high. Although he is awkward at times, so maybe I don't know if the awkwardness gives Muratai uh, some trouble, which I doubt to be honest with you, but I think the matchmaking in this was the thought was all right this guy has no power he does have defensive flaws and Raymond Murata is a power puncher and he's sharp and he's accurate so that's just a re recipe for a knockout and again they're trying to promote Murata they're trying to get you aware of Murata so if he gets a really savage knockout in this fight you know, on a major pay-per-view on the card is another one where you're checking for this fight. This fight, again, is between two undefeated fighters. So I actually like this fight, you know, even though I um, I think Murataya is a major favorite. You know, you can't discount an undefeated fighter. Undefeated fighters never want to give up that, oh, they want to, you know, they always come in prepared. And this is, remember, this is a big opportunity for Steven Ortiz. Steven Ortiz knows he's an underdog in this fight, but he's going to come prepared as hard as he can he's from philadelphia so you know you know he, he's had tough sparring you know, he's probably a tough guy probably grew up in a tough neighborhood so he's gonna come to fight and i like this fight for the undercard for the simple fact this is a two undefeated fighters and again it could be a showcase fight for murataya so another fight on the undercard which it's actually a better fight than some of the fights i just mentioned but it will be free on espn2 is isaac dog bay versus christopher diaz these are two guys who have lost to uh, a Navarrete before two solid warriors this is going to be a good fight I actually would have preferred this fight in the undercard as opposed to the and Hassan and Dom fight but hey you guys are getting it for free on ESPN2 that's not a bad deal I, I'm being honest that's not a bad deal if you guys are getting it for free but again I, that fight uh it, it, it's going to be entertaining either way because they're both Fighters who are not scared to, you know, make it ugly and and and, and exchange a little bit. Uh, I, I like this fight for the undercard, especially since it's free on ESPN too. But yeah, so if you guys were debating on buying this pay per view and you wanted to see how the undercard was gonna be, I want to say the undercard is solid enough where you do buy the pay per view. And to be quite honest, if you're a boxing fan, the uh, the main event should alone make you want to buy this pay-per-view. The Just the main event, because this fight is going to be scintillating. The main event, Sean Porter versus Terrence Crawford. This fight might be fight of the year, but again, if you that's not enough for you and you need a decent undercard, I feel like the undercard is decent enough. The only fight on the undercard that I would say is disgraceful is, is uh, the Hassan Endam fight, which again, two out of uh, two out of the three fights are good is good enough to buy the pay-per-view. But all right, guys, hopefully you guys are now informed about the undercard. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section what you think. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button and follow me on Twitter at underscore Broadway Joel. But all right, guys, until next time, peace.